Hello, this is Anik and you are watching Education Insider. And today we are covering the topic Big O Notation with some more examples. And this topic is publishing under the Asymptotic Notation Lecture. This is the second part and specifically for Big O Notation. And this topic Asymptotic Notation Lecture has total four parts. So I am updating the links to other three parts in the description section. So let's start with the Big O. As discussed in previous video, Big O notation identifies the upper bound and hence bound the function f of n from above. As discussed in previous video, Big O notation identifies the upper bound and hence bound the function f of n from above. And hence we say it that it is a tight upper bound. As you can see in this graph that f of n is bounded by this cg of n. So let's carry on with some examples. So these are some examples that we will be covering in this video. So keep watching for best understanding of big O notation. Here we need to prove that this n cube which is g of n bounds this function 2n square which is f of n or not okay so we use this notation f of n is less than equal to cg of n as discussed in previous video and we will be uh, always assuming this part of inequality uh, let's populate the values of uh, f of n and g of n then we will get something like this now let's get into some algebra and put cut out n by dividing n square on both sides so we will be getting this here basically what we need to do is we have to find out the values of c and n naught okay n naught is minimum value of n and n can cannot be zero and it must be greater than zero now if i assume the value of n as one then what i will be getting I will be getting the value of c as 2. So we uh, get the values of c and n naught and hence we showed that n cube is upper bound of the 2n square. Okay. So let's move uh, to the example number 2. And we need to prove that n square is the upper bound of n square. Okay. First thing first, uh, we use this inequality to prove after populating f of n and g of n in it, we get this. So now again doing some algebra, after cutting n square by dividing n square on both sides, we get value of c as 1. Okay. So if we put n naught is equal to 1, then we will be getting the value of c as 1. And hence we showed the, uh, the that this example is proved as if we put uh, c is equal to 1 or assume c is equal to 1 then we will be getting n naught is equal to 1 and if we cut out this and uh, we will be getting c is equal to 1 and hence if we put here uh, c as 1 then we will be getting the n naught as 1 okay so uh, let's move to example number 3 uh, so we need to prove here that this f of n is bounded by this n square. So as previously described that these questions can be solved using different methods. Uh, I'm doing this question into two ways. So first thing first we need to write the inequality. Now let's populate the values of f of n and g of n into this inequality. So now the method number one is let's increase the n value or n power on every literal to the highest one okay that is present in this inequality so now adding up these we will be getting this so now after cutting out n square by n square by dividing n square on both sides so we will be getting c as 2000 okay and if we put c's value as 2000 here then we will be getting n naught as 1 okay so and hence we showed 
that this g of n bounds this f of n okay so let's move to method number uh, 2 of that same example let's write out the inequality and populate the values of f of n and g of n now listen carefully this is important that i'm going to say as this whole thousand as this whole thousand n square plus thousand n should be smaller or equal to this c n square okay so how this thing will be smaller or equal for example if we assume the value of c as thousand then what is this inequality will hold or not no why because this thousand n is also adding up here which make this side larger than this side so this c value cannot be used here so we must assume one larger than this thousand okay so so we assume c as 1001 so let's populate c value and do some algebra after subtracting thousand n square on both sides i get this okay now let's uh, cut out the n by dividing n on both sides okay so uh, i will be getting something like this so we get the values of c and n naught we assume the c's value as 1001 and we get the value of uh, c uh, of n after populating c's value into this inequality and hence we have proved this example number three let's move to another example we need to prove or disprove that n cube is bounded by this n square or not okay first thing first uh, let's uh, write the inequality so far so good now let's populate the values of f of n and g of n now if you examine this you may get to this point that this side must be sm uh, smaller okay than this side is this satisfying this inequality think about it of course no why because this n cube is greater than this n square so we just simply say that this inequality does not hold okay so this is disproved and we can't bound this n cube by this n square okay let's move to example number five this is looking uh, simple but in fact uh, in this we will be checking our step higher method of solving the inequality and finding out the values of n and c first thing first let's assume the inequality and populate the values of f of n and g of n okay now doing some algebra i pick this 2n from here and place it on the other side okay so now let's take the common okay now if we divide this c minus 2 on both sides we get this so now what value of c i can put here so that n does not get negative value and does not get infinite values let's assume c is equal to 2 then what the n will be get undefined value as this if i uh, assume 2 here it will be getting 0 and anything divided by 0 is going to be infinite so which means n is approaching to infinite values so we must need to assume c value as one larger than this 2 so that this inequality must be whole so i am assuming c value as 3 then if i assume c value as 3 then i will be getting 1 here then n naught value will be 10 okay so we have proved this inequality and yes we have proved this big o notation so let's move to example number six 
now this example is the same as example number four uh, let's start assume inequality and populate the values as you can see that this f of n must be smaller than this g of n but here uh, this 2 square n is greater than this 2n okay so we can simply say that this inequality does not hold and we cannot bound this f of n by this g of n okay if you guys find this video very helpful then do share and subscribe to this education insider channel this boasts me to make more informative videos for you and thank you very much bye bye